I absolutely agree that the Army needs a, an officer core strategy that develops officers to become not only great tactical leaders but also competent strategic leaders who understand a broad range of very, very diverse things that must be done in the complicated 21st century. I think our current culture is very, very biased towards strong tactical leadership, which I agree is very, very important to us. But it can't be so important that we only have tactical leaders and we don't have the strategic leaders that have to link the Army to uh, the various institutions of the nation in these difficult times. I'm perplexed sometimes at our various career fields, for example. Foreign Air Officer is a very good example. You teach a person to be, or you train a person and you educate a person to be a Foreign Air Officer, yet almost no Foreign Air Officer has the ability anymore to become a general officer or to command a battalion or command a brigade. I, I think that, that uh, the same sort of thing is true in the strategist career field. To me, that makes no sense. There should always be a path for any officer to be both a good tactical leader and a expert in some other area. I think it's important that even in this long war that we're in, that we pull officers out of the line occasionally and we give them developmental experiences with other agencies, with other organizations, even with industry, that allows them to broaden themselves. You, you can't learn languages in five seconds. You can't learn about cultures in two or three months. I mean, you have to invest time in people. To me, it's not a matter of trying to build the officer corps so that it's better able to fight Iraq and Afghanistan. It's a matter of developing an officer corps that is more relevant for the 21st century. And that requires more interagency, international, and non-governmental organizational experience. And in addition, we should consider uh, a lot of experience with, with private industry. Broad officers have broad experience. I think it's really important whether we like it or not, to get our officers out to uh, opportunities to serve in the Congress, to get to know our political leaders, to be exposed to the National Security Council, other high elements of government, and to communicate earlier than the four-star general level. It's very unlikely that anyone will be the chief staff of the Army, uh, but at an early age we should be able to look at a group of officers, especially in the major to lieutenant colonel range and say these are future general officers and let's invest in them and somewhere along the line things will go wrong and somewhere along the line people will develop at different rates and different speeds but we need to have a certain amount of, of um, understanding and um, a, ability to uh, develop people individually in a way that makes sense as opposed to in the mass system of officer development that we uh, currently employ. We have done a wonderful job in producing the world's best tactical army and it is an awesome machine and it can beat anything tactically that's ever been put up against it. But we've got to ask ourselves the question just like the Wehrmacht in World War II, it's very interesting. The tactical excellence of the Wehrmacht in the German army in World War II was undisputed. And generally speaking, person for person, they would win their contact. But, but tactical excellence wasn't enough. They were strategically bankrupt. They were also operationally excellent, but they couldn't win the war. They couldn't win the war in a large measure because the officer corps abrogated their responsibility for giving sound military advice to national level leadership. And so, again, we have to ask ourselves the, the, the hard question as to whether or not we have adequately prepared the officer corps for the most important of all leadership, which is strategic level leadership, or are we waiting until people pin on four stars? I think too much we're waiting for people to pin on four stars.